I'm Ari and I live to play. These sports give motivation to my days and meaning to my life. Now, I'm searching the globe for the next great adventure, elevated connections with people, and the higher perspectives of the world. Welcome to the Ari in the Air series. In this episode, we're going to Canada to set up the world's longest slack line. Okay guys, this is Ari in the Air. We just got here to asbestos. This is the mine. We're about to set up the line that is the world record longest ever. It's two kilometers, that's 1.25 miles. That's five laps around the track. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me, but it's gonna be awesome. We've got a lot of work to do to get this thing up, but we got a huge crew. It's gonna be like summer camp for slacklining. Here we go. Whenever I tell people about this project, the first thing they ask is always, how do you even put up a slack line like that? And the answer is really long. But the short answer is that we start with miles of webbing and spend a few entire days taping it together. Then we cut every tree, branch, and telephone pole that's in the way, out of the way. We then walk the webbing down into the mine in slow motion. We sunscreen the boys up and send them out on the boat to pull webbing across the 850 meter wide lake. They tie gallon jugs to it so it floats. We then design, engineer, and fabricate the world's only slack machine to pull in on the webbing. An accomplishment of its own. We gotta go down into the mine and hold the line off the rocks by hand till it has enough tension on it. Then we have to survive the rainstorm. Okay, we love it. When there's enough tension on it, we finally let it go into the sky. not totally done, but it's done-ish. It's, it's, done <laughs> it's up there. We finish by pulling tension by hand. We had solid supervision, and at the end, we deserve our celebration. <laughs> and there you have it the world's longest slack line. It's the big day, and on one side of the mine is the coolest slack line party ever, attended by the entire town and more. On the other side, I'm getting ready to walk the high line. For the first thousand feet, I tell myself just to warm up. Take my time, get in tune, and don't fall down. There's a relative comfort in the beginning with all the cliffs and rocks around, 
it still feels like a normal Highline. But soon I start to encounter the real scale of the line. The length is something I can't really understand. I can't grasp it. It's terrifying. There's this weird sense of almost loneliness out there. Like, I'm a tiny, little, insignificant fish on an ocean of webbing. Like, if I fall down, I'll get stuck out there and drown. The scale of this line is scary. All I can do is keep walking and enjoy it. After about an hour and 15 minutes, I arrive to the far side of the lake, but I still have more than 2,000 feet to walk. At this point, the webbing is a steep mountain in front of me. The line has 450 feet of sag, so to the middle you walk way down, and to finish, you have to climb yourself out. A daunting task after already walking more than a mile. But as I get closer, the energy of the party, the crowd, and my friends cheering me on gives me a boost. It draws me in. amazing thing to arrive over an amazing slackline party at sunset with the music and the crowd. It really doesn't get any better than that. I got nothing to complain about. One foot in front of the other. If you if you uh, get excited that you're gonna cross and you want to be over there, you want it, you want it, you want it, you end up going too fast, you make a mistake, you end up being not present, right? You have to be right where you are. And so if you want to be over there, or if you're concentrating or wishing on being somewhere that you're not, you'll fall down for sure. The only way to balance is to be right where you are. Yeah. Harry, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Had just an amazing, amazing time. What an incredible opportunity. Thanks so much to all my friends who put this thing together. Danny, the event organizer, and all the slackliners who came out to rig this monster. This kind of thing doesn't happen every day. This is the world's biggest toy, and it takes a bunch of friends to blow it up. So I'm glad we came out here to blow up the, the bouncy castle in the sky. <laughs> Woo! Thanks, Michael. Yeah! Dude. I'm so stoked on how this turned out, and super grateful to be a part of it stoked for the next adventure.